We liked everything we saw, but one five-acre parcel in particular stood out, Lot 25. This will be one site here uh, for our guests. We identified several parcels that we really liked, but to make a choice, we jumped in an ATV with the developers and put boots on the ground, hiking boots. So the people who have bought, what, mm -hmm. what have their, their stories generally been? What, what do they want to do? Well, typically, you know, a lot of people are from out of town, so um, a lot of people want to bring their RVs. Uh, in the, but at some point when they sell their houses, wherever they are from, because they're from, you know, anywhere in the United States, they come and they want a place where they can uh, build a house. And you can, you can live your way out here. I mean, it's, it's your land, your way. Quite pretty. We liked everything we saw, but one five acre parcel in particular stood out, lot 25. It had everything we wanted, but to be really sure, we had to spend the night on the land in our RV. Now, one of the things that's neat about this is that it is right on this road, this county road. And uh, there's some advantages here because they are putting electricity through this road. So we would have electricity right here and we could easily run it in right off the road. Now, we heard one vehicle go by the whole night, but still, I would rather, I'd want to be, you know, back in the woods. As far as we could be. The first thing we'd want to do is put in a pad, right, for the mm -hmm. RV? That's number one. So I guess that would go back in here somewhere. So back in here is where I think you'd want to build the pad, right? Right in here. And that would be, you know, that's pretty flat right in there. Yeah, that's great right there. This is really nice. In all, we looked at four different parcels. We liked them all, but it was the lot where we spent the night that most captured our imagination. You'd say which one it is then. I'd say it's 25. I'd say it's 25. You'd I say it. I told you from the beginning. <laughs> 25 it is. Well, that was pretty easy. Yeah. There you go. You put it. All right. Let's do this together. All right. Let's stick her in. Ooh, hey. I brought you a lot. Let's see what happens. There we go. There you go. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's our choice. We have made our choice. And it's ours. Yes, so now we've got to have a few of these trees removed so that we can put in a driveway and a pad and a septic field. And uh, it's going to be fun to dream and plan about what we're going to do here. Okay, you are walking the property line right there. <laughs> Is Bo happy or what? Now, we have officially closed on the property. We got the permits for electricity and water and a septic field. Now, the first phase is going to be to clear the trees so that we can construct a long circular driveway that'll lead back to a little clearing where we'll have the RV sites. So we are going to need some heavy equipment and we want to share this whole experience with you. So we're going to document this so that you can see what we're doing. Well, as you can see, we have a lot of trees that we have to clear first 
Most of these, by the way, are loblolly pines. They're 20 to 30 feet high. This does indeed eat the trees. This uh, literally grabs hold of them and it mulches the trees and um, we're gonna have a driveway. Now that the driveway's done, it's time to doze it, to kind of go through and smooth out that driveway a little bit. We should be able to drive in after that, but uh, that's the second of three steps to make that driveway for us. With this part of the driveway in, we took our first drive in the RV on it. Okay, we're pretty excited. This is driving in on our new driveway. Now the stones and the gravel aren't down yet, but this is the first time taking the RV to be its normal spot. They do have a pad flattened out for us. Even though we spent one night out by the road while we were considering buying this property, tonight is the official night. The dirt is here, the road has set, the trees have been taken down, we put our mat out because of all the dirt. The sun can hit our solar panels. Tomorrow the gravel, the stones are going to come. We're going to spend a couple nights. And uh, this is a beautiful place, very beautiful. Hey Bo, do you like it here? Do you want to go for a walk? Come on Bo! The next morning, we had to drive back out because it was time to cover the driveway with a permanent surface of crushed rock and gravel. It took nine truckloads. This is so exciting. I'm glad we're here and we get to see this. Okay, Mike, we're ready to level this off just a little bit and put the fire pit on top of this area with the stone. All right. Oh, well, you park in the spot. You can see from the drone footage that we really are in the middle of the wilderness uh, on a, a little bit of a mountaintop surrounded by deep forest and, uh, and woods. So there is our poor Bo sitting there looking at us, rejected from the pack. Can't go in the RV because he's all mud. <laughs> Such is it's life. A, it's a dog's life. <laughs> yeah. Obviously we could move forward a little bit and we could get another unit in here, do you think, right? I think we could. And uh, maybe out that end? Three would be the max. Yeah. Us and two others. Up on the road, there's um, natural gas going through. There's a water line. And there's electricity. And electricity is just, is going to be installed in the next couple of months along this road. And we'll have all of that running. And we have a permit already for septic. But uh, pretty fun, pretty fun. They've been busy at our property at the Woodlands in mid-Tennessee, clearing trees, installing utilities, and grading the pads where we'll park the RV. Since we put the driveway in two months ago, we've now added water lines, 
run them to what will eventually be our three RV spots, and we've installed a septic system so we can now empty our gray and black water tanks. So uh, we're here at our campsite now. This is the main campsite, and we have shown you this uh, since we started. Uh, this uh, is a drive-through site like here. This is flat right now, and I think I think we will eventually put uh, cement or concrete down there. Yeah, we're going to want a pad. We are excited to say that two of the of the utilities have been installed, and <laughs> we'll show you. Um, now the ground looks a little bit rough. Let me start with that, and I guess we can explain uh, why that looks uh, <laughs> kind of rough because what's out there? Well, dirt, our septic field. Yeah. We had to uh, mulch a lot of uh, pines and make our septic field, but the septic field is there. And we made an extra big septic field so that someday, if we ever want to put a house here, we can. This will be one site here uh, for our guests, and this will be a back-end site. It's gonna need quite a bit of fill. The fire pit over there, we're going to move and we're going to put that eventually right out here in the center part. In case they see the uh, tree stumps that are there and the roots and everything, that will be ground up. They had all they could do to do what they did because of the wet soil, but that will be tended to in time. It's not going to look messy like that. Here's some drone footage that shows you our surroundings at the woodlands. Basically, we're on a mountaintop surrounded by 3,000 plus acres of wilderness. The other lots being sold around us range from over five acres to more than 100 acres in size. And there are no restrictions on staying here in our RV. While we may choose to someday build a permanent home, there's no such requirements. It's our land and we can use it our way. This is the other site right here and this too will be a back in site, you know, back in, uh, or you could drive in and then come back around if you're a good driver, but this will be 30 by 20. And it, uh, it has a spigot for water. It's got sewer and uh, we will be putting electricity in. We'll talk about that in a second. What do they call those? Hollows. Hollows. Hollers. We're surrounded. <laughs> yeah. As the locals call hollers. There's a holler there. There's a holler in the back. There's a holler over in the side. And, um, uh, is really nice because it gives you a lot of privacy. But uh, for now, we are ahead of schedule in getting this thing developed. And that's good because the spring rains are gonna come. Yeah, and Bo, he's found some wood to play with and chew and have a great time. He's already taken to loving his land. And uh, I think we are too. We have really fallen in love with this part of, uh, of Tennessee and the people who live around here. Okay, uh, we had a little emergency. Our refrigerator died yesterday. So the so good news I'm, is... Uh, I'm cooking up a lot of food, trying to use it up rather than just toss it. Making lemonade out of a broken refrigerator with sausage and eggs and toast. We got to look at our property and figure out where we're going and what we've been doing. The very first reality check, and uh, <laughs> it's right here. Want to tell them what happened here? Oh, yeah. Bo, Bo, don't drink out of a mud puddle. Bo does have real water. This and was originally going to be our main site, but we changed our plans. Now our main site is going to be right here. We had also planned to put, as you say, a cement concrete pad down here but um, and that would have uh, that's why the there's that er, that water right there there is erosion I mean the water is going to flow down so water goes down and it was just going to flow across the concrete pad but uh, since these two guest sites that we've made or that we should say our friend Jonathan our excavator has made these are really nicer and uh, these are going to be our main sites I think and then for guests, we can have a third site if we need right here, right? Yes. Look at how high that hill is. That's about six feet. Oh, it's at least six feet. And then, Too look. bad they don't have snow. We could do sledding. And then you see this? This is um, erosion. And Bo is concerned about it. <laughs> he looks, we think when we pick up the fifth wheel that we're going to have, that this is where we will kind of keep it. And uh, it's a nice site. It really is fine. I think we're, we're, we're happy here. And uh, let's go show them this, uh, this other site. 
We could we could also use this as a main site. Yeah. We do have the hookups in. And this is a beautiful view. Oh yeah, this is a really beautiful. So we explained this once before, but the landscape around here are valleys and uh, hollows, or hollers as hollers. Uh, locals call them. And it's beautiful though, isn't that pretty? Very pretty. So this is, um, <laughs> Bo doesn't know what we're doing, but, but he is in. checking it he out. He is in. Whatever is we're in. doing, Bo is in. Yeah. You know, uh, I looked at the uh, trail cam video the other day too, and we, we have a, a small herd of deer that uh, frequent here every night. And there's a really little cute little armadillo as well. So they're, uh, they're on the site. But um, as we look across, we can show you how nice that looks, that site. Doesn't that look good? Yeah, these are premium sites. You got some space in between and then we'll get some pebbles, stones, so that you Maybe can- Maybe some gravel, we'll, we'll, we'll figure, smooth that out. And then uh, we got to find a picnic table and our fire pit. And we're going to look for some native shrubs and flowering bushes and a few things to plant around there to landscape mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Well, since the last time we were here, they have put in this utility pole and a lot of others. This is going to be ours and a transformer is going to be on it. And this is going to be our source of electricity soon. Our excavator, Jonathan, he's taking us to a site where we can see something that'll help us with our erosion problem. Something called riffraff. Huh. <laughs> riffraff is something that you want to keep out, right? Maybe it's riffrack? I don't know. I don't, I'll we'll find, find out. out. I this recommend stuff? this. I... This this definitely helps as far as for uh, you know erosion control. Right. This helps a lot. So this mud we've been encountering? It's because of a lot of rain. Yeah. How much have you had? Like, uh, what did somebody say? Just the other day, we had about eight inches of rain in four hours. And then uh, yesterday, there was about an inch and a half to two inches. So Jonathan, this is what you recommend, this stuff? Yes. Okay. This was really a productive visit this time. Jonathan helped us out to get the vision of what we need to do with our problem of water. So next time we come... Well, we're going to change a few things, right? Like yeah. you say, our, we have a new main site for our RV, which will mm -hmm. be right the, the pad we're on now. We might extend it a little bit. We're going to put that rip rack, uh, that rip rock in there, and uh, that'll be... Uh, That'll keep down the erosion. And uh, Bo is saying that he'd like a doghouse, dog maybe house? a little shade pavilion on the other site. He's uh, he seems to be liking that one right now. He's over there looking quite comfy. <laughs> Hi, Bo. He's saying that that's, that's a very his good site. Spot. That's his site. <laughs> Our parcel is five acres of beautifully forested land. Maybe we should just give everybody a quick look at how we did this. And uh, we bought in, in November of 2021. And uh, here it is as we do this in August of 2022 when we can say it's done. Uh, our parcel is located on a uh, uh, a road, uh, a well-maintained county road. Uh, there are roads that lead to all of the different parcels that uh, that uh, they're selling here. They're, they're in great shape. Very little traffic. We have uh, put in gates. Uh, we have a U-shaped driveway, which we'll walk right now. This is one of our gates here that uh, you saw us open at the beginning of the shots. We left as many trees as we could, and we decided to put our spots uh, uh, maybe oh, 200 feet down from the, the county road, that sparsely populated county road we showed you. And we have built uh, now uh, three spots for RVs. We just want to be able to have a nice area for ourselves and to be able to invite people to join us. And we can easily accommodate three and we have two other spots where if you want yeah. to camp, you could. So we're at uh, kind of the, the end of the, the first driveway in. 
and let's just kind of wander about and we'll show them uh, all of our sites here. Uh, there's one spot where our truck is. <laughs> we just decided to park our truck there. It's in the shade. And uh, we use the truck to run into town and do some exploring. And then, town is not too far from no, us. No, it's literally, we mentioned it. Town is literally four miles away, but <laughs> it might as well be a world away because it's really rural. There's where we parked uh, our fifth wheel. And that is uh, one of the spots. And right in the middle, where you can see that post coming up between uh, our heads there, that is a third spot. So we have three spots with hookups, full hookups. And we have sewer, water, and electric. And electric. You know that we enjoy the woods. We really like the remote part here and being able to be kind of away from it all. But we also like the water. And the Buffalo River is only half a mile from our location, as half a mile as the crow flies. So we have the river, we have the water close by, and yet we have the woods as well. What do you say we give them a peek at the Buffalo River and tell them how cool that is? I think that's a good idea. So the Buffalo River is just a stone's throw from our spot at the Woodlands. Uh, there's a canoe or a boat launch there. This is a favorite river for fishermen. It's world renowned for smallmouth bass. Uh, they say there's 85 species in here. Watch out, boat. Yeah. Well, but I don't know what all they are. So what's the best of that fish they got in here? I'd say smallmouth for sport fishing. But it is also a absolutely fantastic kayaking river. That's a great spot. Oh, the river's so calm and peaceful. No need to worry. It's, it's a piece of cake. So you can canoe on the Buffalo River, you can kayak on the Buffalo River, but you can also take this raft that they call the Monster, and you can just float down. And this is pretty, this is my idea of whitewater rafting. I'm just glad there's no white water because this is calm and peaceful. So a couple of questions that we want to answer that we get all the time, and there's no way we can answer all of the questions that you're going to have about building your own RV land. So the best uh, advice we have is, is to go to the, uh, the developer's website and uh, get in touch with them and they can, they can answer all of your questions. But a couple of the easy ones that we had is one, uh, what about taxes? <laughs> well. Tennessee is a no income tax state. It's one of the lowest tax rates anywhere in the country. And here in Perry County, for our five acres, our taxes are going to be about, oh, 545 bucks or so a year. And that's, uh, that's pretty good for five acres. Uh, what about uh, restrictions, people ask? Um, this is our land and it's our way. We can build, but we don't have to build. We're going to use it right now for our RV and uh, to invite some guests. Uh, other people are building mountaintop cabins, and uh, we may do that someday, sometime ourselves. Uh, I'm not ruling that out, but we don't have to. Uh, again, it's our land, our way. And then what about getting help to do all of this work and developing it? And that couldn't have been a, a better process for us. When we bought, the developers gave us a list of local contractors, excavators, electricians, uh, septic uh, engineers, and uh, we met with uh, them, hired uh, one of the local guys, uh, and um, he helped us with every step of the way. There were lots of consultations, lots of advice that we got, because we've never done this before. We cleared trees, we drew out the driveway, we made the, the RV spots, and it was really fun to, uh, to, be, a, to be visiting here as this progress uh, was made over the last uh, few months. It's done. And uh, now we're making phase two plans. 
And uh, the most important of all those plans is uh, we are going to have some fun. We are going to invite some friends over, uh, even uh, this week as we're here doing this video and uh, camp with us. And uh, uh, I, I think you can tell that Jen and I are really excited. Just having the peace of mind of being here in God's creation, in the woods, um, it's, it's so nice. What a place to decompress and unplug and enjoy ourselves. We can't wait to use this fire pit. We're ready to get a good fire going at night and roast some marshmallows. So, we've got the fire pit. And in case you're wondering what this is, this is our Starlink internet satellite dish. Don't worry, when we start that fire, this will be moved. Now, I should point out, I don't really need the Starlink. I just like to use it because uh, it gives me really fast internet. But the cell phone coverage here is phenomenal. Uh, I do most of my work just over my uh, normal uh, Wi-Fi cellular hotspot. But here's even better. I can put all of that away because available right now, they're installing it even as we speak up and down this area, broadband fiber internet. It's time to officially name our little RV retreat here at the Woodlands uh, at the Buffalo River. So we have thought hard about what are we gonna call our little getaway? And uh, we had a lot of people make suggestions. Most common one is people said we should call it the Wendlands Wonderland or <laughs> the Woodland, the Wendlands at Woodlands. And that's kind of tongue tripping, but uh, we appreciate this, Emma. But we came up with our own name. And uh, are you ready to announce it? I am. It is. Loblolly Ridge. Now, what the heck kind of a name is that? I know a lot of you are wondering. Well, the Loblolly is the name of the pine tree that uh, surrounds our... Uh, so you can see it all around the background on us. And uh, this is a ridge. It's kind of... The woodlands is on a mountaintop. It's surrounded by lush forests. There's hardwoods down in what are called the hollows, the hollers, as they say here. And on the ridges, loblolly pines. And there are lots of loblolly pines. That's kind of a tongue twister, too. At least it is for me. I'll get used to saying it. I though. keep saying lollipop pines, but it's loblolly. <laughs> well, we a lollipop. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, there are lots of pines, and the property that we bought was totally pines. Yeah, this is on a ridge, and uh, all along us are the hollers where some hardwoods grow, and, and it's, it's beautiful. I mean, this whole woodlands development is... Uh, really thousands of acres of uh, beautiful spots uh, on this uh, little mountaintop near Linden, Tennessee. And so in honor of these great pine trees, they should hear the wind blowing through well, them. Well, that the is my breeze. favorite. When the wind blows and you hear that soft rustling of the pine needles, that's yeah. my favorite time. And then there is just this clean pine smell to the mm -hmm. air. So let's put up our sign Lovely. and uh, we welcome you to explore with us now, Loblolly Ridge, our property at the Woodlands. So the sign is up and you might wonder what's the purple band around the tree? Well, the purple band is kind of a universal signal for private property. We think it's a lot nicer than private, keep out, no trespassing. This just means it's private property and uh, looks a lot better, I think, than uh, nailing keep out signs. I hope you enjoyed your tour of what's now known as Loblolly Ridge. We sure enjoy it here. It's a little slice of paradise, the woods for us, and we're meeting some great people, and we're having fun. That's the important thing. We're having fun, and we're relaxing. Thanks for watching. Happy trails. Mm -hmm.